What? You can do that? Okay. The more you know, I guess. Enemy movements carefully, then throw the material at them. Then the fact that that's a thing you can even do is mind blowing to me. <laughs> You've proven your mastery. I had to Google what to even do there because. I was literally just trying to like pick up the items, drop them, fucking anything I could do just to. Bubble gem, real as can be. You did it. Now I can transform the story just like the ones I adore. Thank you so much. Please take this gift to you in return. Hey, Boku Boy mask. See, I collect all sorts of monstrous parts, uh, monstrous treasures. That is, monster parts and goods uh, that make you look like a monster. The mask I gave you made you look like a Bokoblin so much that so that even Bokoblin would take you for one. By all means, do try it. Uh, then you will see what it's like to have a body and heart of a Bokoblin. At last, at last, the time has come. Time to gobble down the bubble gem. Cheers and bottoms up. Oh, my body. It isn't changing, but but I do feel a strange sensation washing over me. Uh, it can only mean one thing, and I'm on my way to become a story, and that means more. I need more of them. And I can't just gobble them up for one time. No, that'll never work. I must collect lots and lots, need them all at once. And to do that... Hilton, big brother, I've decided to sit on a tree to collect bubble gems. I see. Well, it seems you've made up your mind. That being the case, you have my complete support. I hope you collect as many bubble gems as you need. Big brother, thank you. Thank you. Traveler, I'm grateful you helped me, but I've decided to sit out on the journey to collect bubble gems. Next time you get your fingers on a bubble gem, please, please do give it to me. If you do, I'll trade you a gift from my collection and treasure for it. And with that, I hope to meet you again somewhere sometime. Okay. Well, that was an easy quest to complete because I already had a bubble gem. Hmm. Off he goes. I do hope he's able to make his dream come true. Hmm. Now, I have to be on my journey as well. I'll be making my way back, uh, journey to Terrytown and Akala. Hmm. But dear traveler, thank you so much for helping my little brother. And though I hate to impose, I do hope that during your travels you'll find some time to assist him further. Hmm. I will keep my ears wide open for news about my brother's whereabouts. Time to visit. Uh, so visit me in Terrytown if you need help finding him. Yes, yes, I'll be going now. Okay. No. No.
Easy quest. Easy. In the tower we go. Oh, I was right. Using a terminal did open the door. Thank you. I was in, that was a big help. Oh. Now then, I think I'll take a little break before heading to my next job. Time to get launched. your power it doesn't suddenly grant you mastery and control that's still up to you that means if you don't already know how to get yourself home <sighs> there are stories about the secret stones and a forbidden act called draconification to swallow a secret stone is to become an immortal dragon, one blessed with eternal life. <gasps> Interesting. Another way to reach the future, though not a very quick one. So you think these stories could hint at a solution to our dilemma? Wait, so is she the fucking dragon flying yes. around? But there is still more to those tales. To become an immortal dragon is to lose oneself. That is why it is forbidden. I thought maybe this could lead to a solution. Some way to transcend time. Call it now. She's the dragon. But if you and have to free sacrifice her your heart dragon. and mind, sacrifice what makes you, you. I'm sorry. I wish I could help more. <laughs> Back where we started. There's still hope. I think the answer, the answer to this problem lies in study and learning more about the nature of your power. I'm sure Sonya would be happy to help you. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I'm calling it now. The dragon flying around in the sky is Zelda, and you have to, like, save her, and these are her tears. That's why you have her memories.
Hey, Umber Trousers. Huh? Whoa, what'd you do? No way, there are like a million chests in here. How did you do that? Okay, yeah, we tailed you. I admit it, but we never thought you'd actually find it. We've been hunting treasure long enough to know the rules. Finders keepers were not going to try and take it from you. Yeah, no matter how cool it is. So jealous of you. Left in there. Yeah. I'm going to look for myself out of the way. Hmm. Treasure you in there. Uh huh. Oh, darn. It's just a regular old bottle. Oh. I don't think we'll find anything else around here. Come on, person. Let's go find ourselves another cave. Ah. You got it, Dak. Let's go to this cave of quests. second. Let's go. Hey, the 200 IQ plays by me. I truly am a genius. Such fell upon me so suddenly, I could not wash away. If only I had some water. Mired in muck. I need water. How the fuck am I gonna need water? Ah. Save me, thank you. How shameful that this should happen to me, Captain of the Guard of the Zora's Domain. Unbelievable. <sighs> After the appeal, that filth suddenly began falling from the sky. It sullied the waters around here in Zora's Domain. Everyone is at their wits' end because of it. That is why I set out to investigate the surrounding area myself to think I would fall prey to the falling sludge myself. <sighs> Just thinking of it makes my scales bristle. My gills still feel unclean. If you had not sprayed with water, I shuddered to think what would have happened to me. <sighs> Perhaps take this Zora spear as a token of my thanks. I am sorry that it is not much, but it is all I have. It is it decayed like the other weapons, but uh, the upheaval, but well, it is not unusable at least. Hmm. I'll give too many weapons to your possession, it seems. If you make room in return, I'll give you this Zora spear. Alright, what are we dropping? We'll drop the rusty halberd. You're back. You must allow me to thank you. Thank you for saving me here. The Star Spirit is here. The weapons expelled in the cave still not completely without use. It's a high attack power when it gets wet. Okay. Mired in muck is complete. Okay. Well, let's uh, get this tower then. 
Surface map updated. Sky map updated. There'll be people that'll go extinct that'll you know, take that drug or uh, eat this way or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it lives in lifestyle of eating bugs, whatever, and they'll end up extinct. Like, or if they don't end up extinct, they actually have kids, they'll become very dysfunctional. They'll go to public school XYZ. So it's like, oh yeah, there'll be people that'll make it through the bottleneck and will actually be almost, um, and, uh, you know, they're stigmatic, but you know what I mean? Um, what, what I find interesting is if you, if you look at, like, the current birth rates, it seems like the people that are going to make it through the bottleneck are going to be, like, your, your Mennonites and your, like, hyper-traditionalist communities. Because even, like, the you know, like, trad cat type people, they, like, most of them only have, like, two or three kids. Like, they're not exactly, like, replacement rate birth rates either. Or if they are, they're just at replacement rate birth rates. It, it looks like it's going to be, like, your hyper-traditionalists, like, your people that, like, yeah, they have, like, fucking, you know, 12 kids and live on a farm and that kind oh. of stuff. So I wonder, uh, what I wonder they've is never if, made it to the What's that? They've never been in the field. They, well, they won't, I don't think they'll make it through the filter because they don't even participate in the filter like just like i said the caste system will happen in the in the west like you're gonna have people left like when the thing is done you're gonna have a bunch of like books like literal like yeah like idiocracy level um like people that are like on like drugs and if they get off the drugs or schizophrenia comes back you know what i mean that level of that type of person and then of course mennonites and Hutterites and amish i don't think they count because they're always they're secluded so they've never counted in the um the filter well, I think the thing is, the, if, if they're the only ones that left, then they kind of win by default. But I, when it comes to, I, I guess the big thing is, you know, if another civilization is able to, uh, you know, learn from our mistakes, like say China, for example, if China learned, well, China's already kind of fucked because of the birth rate, but some, if, if somehow they manage to turn their birth rate around, um, or, you know, some other nation rises up and takes China's place. And then you have them not go down the same, like, kind of path that we made of Britons. And if you go to, like, a, a major city, right, it, it's even more so. Because most of the native Britons live outside of, like, London and, you know, Manchester and all the major cities. Well, I used to talk about that, like, in 2013, about, um, about the population, what's it called? The, um, the migrant, that was the very beginning, 2013 was the very beginning of the migrant crisis and, um, in Europe, right? Yeah. And some people were like looking on TV and like, you know, caring or not caring or whatever. And I was, and people were saying that, no, but we're still 99.87%, you know, Italian. We're still, you know, France is still 87 point whatever. And I was like, no, France is 10% French. Italy is like 40% Italian because I don't care about the people in retirement homes. I'm looking, I want to go yeah. into a kindergarten and then do the statistics just for kindergarten. Yeah. Because when you look at people under 20 in the US, it's like 20% white. Actually, but no, but the U.S. is 70.8. I don't care what the U.S. is with the boomers. It's like counted. I want to know the, the statistics with the youth and the youth in France are majority uh, non-French and the youth in Germany are majority non-French. So but, but technically, uh, Germany is still like over 50 percent. It doesn't matter. The thing is, it's done. It's minority Ita German just because the youth are minority German. Um, and and all, that's also excluding the half the Germans uh, youth are like completely suicidal and will never change. Yeah. 
Like they, they want to go extinct. So uh, yeah, so with, with these numbers of like England is still 70, Ireland is still 99, I, I don't mind. Like if, if I'm walking to high school in Dublin, half the school is going to be like Pakistani. Yeah, you're, uh, so you're starting cool. to see that where I live. Like I live in a really rural area in Canada. And when I was in high school, like just under 10 years ago, we had a handful of people who weren't fucking white, right? There was maybe 10 people in the entire school that weren't white. And, and most of them were mixed, right? Like they had a one white parent and one either black or Asian or whatever they were parent. So you, even all the, the non-white kids were partially white. And then like um, protesting against the, um, against the like uh, papers, the COVID papers. And I just said it was theater. Like, I honestly, I was, I was telling my lips to tell, like, yeah, this is being orchestrated by the government. Um, because protests literally are, you know, in the cycle. It's like, hey, the mouth is, hey, on Sunday, go yell for two hours and go back home and, like, swallow it, you know? Yeah. It's, well, not, it's, it's like, it's been. The thing is, the elite won't let you protest anything they don't want protested. Well, that, you that's can't what I want. So I went, I, went, actually, I went to the protest, and that's. That black filled me a lot on protest. Um, ba basically, what I realized is any protest they want to happen is like portrayed in the media as like a good thing, fighting for their rights for freedom. And anything they don't want to happen is like far right extremism. Like that was one of the funniest things to me was like this concept. Like a lot of the news here is like state run, so we have like CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, but it's literally just state run media, and they were talking about it as like if this was this white nationalist revolt against the government because of immigration it had nothing to do with immigration and the funny thing there was there was like a ton of asian people a ton of indians like it was just an anti-covid protest and fucking they were they were trying to portray it on the media like it was this white nationalist revolt and it was so funny because like people i know that claim to be conservative but like they're like very boomer conservative like media never lies and fucking, they, they completely believed, like, everything that the media was saying. And it's like, they lie about everything. Why would you believe anything they say? Well, like, the new conservative or the Western conservative is also a style. It's, it's just, like, left-wing people. Like, being conservative now in the West is like, you're left-wing, but you want to do it slowly. You yeah. want to, to do the left-wing stuff but slowly. So it's not like actual conservatism, but they call it that. And, like, real conservatism is, like, labeled as, like, insane, like, illegal stuff. And yeah, and even back then with uh, the writing letters, um, you know, because letters were so, it's kind of funny how they, it was taken so seriously. Now it's like, I don't know if letters still exist. I think they do, but it's not serious like, anymore. Um, but back then there was a whole like um, procedure, you know, uh, keeping letters secrets, uh, checking the seals open. Uh, um, I don't know the handwriting. And it's kind of funny, like I'll actually read some old letters from like 400 years ago, of course, like digitally, and I can't understand anything. If it's in Italian or if it's in English, it doesn't matter. Like, just already the cursive, it's almost like I'm some public school kid that I can't, like, read or something because it's like, I can't understand anything they're writing in letters. Uh, I, like, slowly read it, like, okay, that's a the, that's this, that's this, but I just can't read the letter. I don't know how people in the past were able to. Yeah, the old writing system. The cursive. And, uh, and I already talked about, like, ability and, like, the king. I feel like that was also epic. That was epic. I don't, I don't know. But today, uh, what do you do as a? Do you have any like uh, hobbies that really uh, brighten your day? Um, I, I do jujitsu still. Not as much as before because I don't work at a gym anymore. But I like combat sports. Grew up doing like wrestling and kickboxing and stuff, so I've always done a ton of combat sports. Um, other than that, just kind of play video games, hang out with my friends. Pretty mellow. What about you? I don't know, me, I, don't, I feel like for the past five, five, six years or something, I've been um, traveling. Uh, of course, I've stopped doing that now for the past, I don't know, seven months I've stopped traveling. But I was traveling, I don't know, looking for um, for something, you know. I, was, I, I think what I was looking for was um, 